Cambrai in northern France. On the 20th of November 1917, the site of the first major use of tanks in the world. Here, the British Army would put what they had learned into practice. Britain's invention of the tank cracked a key First World War problem, how to combine firepower and movement. Tanks needed dry, hard ground. They got it at Cambrai. The attack was led by a general from the front. A lithe figure strode up, pipe aglow, ash stick under his arm. Unexpected, it was General Ellis. I'm going over in this tank, he announced, tapping Hilda. I swung the door open and he squeezed through inside. The artillery now knew not to chew up the ground ahead. A short, sharp bombardment, and then over 300 tanks rolled into the first light. Just before 6.30 a.m., the barrage commenced, and we started off. Our first bump came fairly soon. We climbed a bank, crashed through a hedge, and came down heavily on the other side. We were thrown about like so many peanuts, and we had to clutch on to whatever we could. Sophisticated, innovative plans of the war. The aim was to break through the German lines with minimal loss of life. The artillery would use their new skills and technology to locate and target the German batteries before the battle. The tanks would punch a hole in the German lines, with the infantry tucked up close for mutual protection, while the cavalry pushed through. Secrecy was crucial. Screens were erected to hide movements. Telltale tracks were covered with mud. The question ever uppermost in all our minds was, does the Hun suspect anything? It was most exciting. About 9 a.m., retreating infantrymen gave us an account of swarms of tanks, so many that it was absolutely impossible to stop them. A little later, the tank monsters came creeping to the ridge south of the village. Not one of us had seen such a beast before. Then, a dramatic indication that real progress had been made. For the first time, we saw the magnificent spectacle of our field artillery limbering up and going forward. First at a trot, then at a gallop, battery after battery to take up new positions on the captured German front line. The Germans were caught on the hop, then pushed back five miles, a greater Allied advance than anything achieved on the Somme or in Flanders. It was a long, hard day, but the sight of all the ground that had been taken with so little bloodshed was a real tonic. Troops seemed very pleased with our tanks, so pleased we had many drinks with them. It's astonishing how much whiskey the British Army carries into battle. On the 21st of November, church bells rang out across Britain, just as they had done in Germany for Verdun. And again, the celebrations were a little hasty. 
the British had not achieved all their objectives. Some villages near Cambrai remained in German hands, including Flesquier. The Highlanders in this sector had been ordered to keep well away from the newfangled tanks, so they couldn't help them by knocking out machine gun nests and artillery. The Germans knocked out 32 tanks at Flesquier. More were crippled by stormtroopers in the narrow streets of Fontaine, Notre Dame. There was horrible slaughter in Fontaine, and I, who had spent three weeks before the battle in thinking out its possibilities, had never tackled the subject of village fighting. I could have kicked myself again and again for this lack of foresight, but it never occurred to me that our infantry commanders would thrust tanks into such places. The Germans also had the bright idea of mounting anti-aircraft guns on lorries and attacking the tanks with armor-piercing shells. Nine tanks rolled towards us. The captain orders, steady men, wait for it. When the enemy is less than a hundred meters away, the command rings out, rapid fire. The first tank rears upwards, those following halt. One direct hit after another. Within a week, the Germans launched a massive counterattack with stormtroopers supported by aircraft. Within 10 days, they'd recovered all their lost ground. Yet Cambrai was crucial for the British. They'd gained valuable experience with the tanks and cracked their artillery problems. Vital lessons were learned about teamwork on the battlefield. The big challenge for both sides now was how to consolidate the successful breakthrough. The master of that would win the war.